down to the abyssal layer of the radio photic sea creatures. Stab your balls with an ice pick because I, Tokyo Choo Choo, am going to be your host today. And uh, with me are two guys who stab their balls with toothpicks and then serve them up at swanky parties as cocktail snacks. It's Human Metal and Brack. How are you guys? How are you, Human Metal? It's uh, called a delicacy in uh, in mm. Germany. Yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, you, you might you only might in have the very... top class restaurants you can get it. Mm. You might have very delicate balls, but that's not my business, Brack. <laughs> Uh, human, metal. <laughs> human metal. Judging from his facial hair, I have my doubts. So, hmm. <laughs> I don't. Now, are you making me picture Bragg's balls? And that's not something it's I want. It's entirely your <laughs> fault. It's entirely your fault. You, you created. You wrote up that intro. So, well, one thing you know, leads to another. You know how it works on this podcast. I, I always get the feeling that the inside of a testicle looks a little bit like a scallop. So take, <laughs> take that what you will. Probably have to ask, ask a doctor, urologist, <laughs> or whoever is responsible for that. Uh, I'm fine, actually. Um, everything. My my heart, my balls, my back. I think everything is fine. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, not much to talk about on a personal level. I've been... Uh, which we already wanted to talk about last time, but, you know... We got limited space on the shallows, so I, I dropped that or kept that for this week. Uh, I want to talk about The Boys, which is a, a show on Amazon Prime, which is uh, by Garth Ennis, the guy behind, or based on a comic by Garth Ennis, uh, the guy behind uh, um, Preacher. Ah, Preacher. Uh, we have talked about that show before, I think. Yeah, and also a very good Punisher run. And uh, yeah. Uh, this show is about basically a bunch of superheroes, um, corp corporate superheroes, basically where uh, superheroes have been turned into corporate commodity and who are all assholes. And Chuchu is suffocating on, or something, burning, uh, yes, this is fantastic. <laughs> dying, he's dying. He's dying. He's dying. He's, dying. he's, he's sk face. skipped by a superhero. His eyes are really red. Who turned into his a fucking to crisp. Light up. Yeah. Chuchu, are you alright? Ah, oh, damn, that's a spicy gym. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> God. Oh. What right, is this called when, when you can hear, uh, when you can uh, w watch a video or listen to a soundbite on YouTube and it's a very intense uh, noise that you can immediately relate to, HDMR or something? I forgot what it's called. Should have done that. So. Yeah, good. Anyway, so The Voice is about a bunch of superheroes who are uh, employed by this giant company and images everything. And yeah, that company is called Amazon, something like that? I don't remember. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. It's funny. It's, it's weird that this is, uh, this is on Amazon, Breck is right. But, you know, it, it works. And uh, uh, it's very self-aware and makes a lot of fun of the genre. Very mean-spirited, so... You have to deal with that. But it's got a cool cast. Um, Carl Urban is one of the main guys, and he's fun as always. But the rest of the cast is great, too. Elizabeth Chu as the company head. Um, yeah, great Maybe. stuff all around. Her relationship with their Superman. Quote, unquote, yes. Yeah, who's like... He's not the biggest douche, but he's just like a psychopath, right? Yeah, right. Uh, I, uh, fantastically portrayed by that, uh, by that actor. I forgot his name, sorry. But yeah, uh, it's star who, who I like from yeah. uh, Benji. He's really good mm -hmm. in that as well. And uh, but yeah, their relationship is really freaky. Like, really fucked really, up. Yeah, really disturbing. <laughs> and like this sh show in general is pretty very disturbing. Freudian. Right, the show in general is pretty disturbing in a lot of yeah. ways. Not but also as very funny. Thank God. Like I really, I've, I've tried to read the comic. Okay. And it's at, it's definitely Card Ennis' uh, worst to me for what I've read. I really didn't like it. It was. Way too cynical, way more cynical than this is. Okay. Like, and it's like, just and this is like, already very cynical. Like, but yeah, it's yeah. having fun with it. Like, there are a lot of scenes in there that are actually really funny. There's, you know, fucked up beyond belief, but incredibly funny. Uh, if you have a um, fucked up sense of humor, which I think all of us do. Uh, so yeah, it's 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 an incredibly entertaining show. Great production values. It, it looks really good, and uh, the story went some expensive. For yeah, sure. it really does. Um, and the story went some places that I didn't didn't expect, and really put a nice spin on the whole, you know, uh, satirizing the genre stuff and everything. 
And yeah, I from beginning to end, I really liked it. Took some twists and turns here, and the characters are all um, fun all the way through, every one of them, pretty much. And I like that they put spend pretty much equal time, kind of, on the heroes and the actual boys who are the people who actually trying to kill the heroes or, you know, uncover the uh, conspiracy behind the whole, he how the heroes were actually, um, you know, created, well, came into being and everything and what the company is doing with them. And yeah, it's uh, it's cool stuff. And I, I'm really looking forward to season two. Breck, what's your overall impression on the uh, show? I thought it was pretty funny. I really liked the, the story. It is really... It feels like a page turner, even though it's like a yeah. series. But it feels like every after it's made every for episode, watching. like yes, I want to see more. Yeah, I want to see what happens next. It's it's very uh, uh, very pulpy in that way, where it's oh, like, yeah. it, <laughs> and it's like it knows pulpy. what you want to see. You know, and, and it knows also like to give it to your base desires of just showing like crazy violent stuff every once in a while. It feels to keep very you focused. It feels yeah? very grindhouse at times. So yeah, good. Fair grindhouse, yes. Yeah. And I like that it parodies uh, uh, like corporate uh, culture as well. Yeah. And I like that the way that the superheroes are definitely more like celebrities here, where it's like they have like a very much a public persona like a celebrity has, mm -hmm. but then behind the scenes they're very, uh, uh, very fucked up and uh, and spoiled and little whiny bitches every once in a while. Oh yeah. And also, yeah, they actually have like a. A Me Too type storyline in there, which is pretty well handled, much better than in the comic. Uh, yes, I, I, I'm not surprised. <laughs> oh, no, definitely not surprised there. And uh, yeah, really good performances. I really, yeah, I thought uh, the main crew of like Carl Urban is always great. Carl is literally, he's like the only thing that makes that character work because in the comics he's just like an asshole who you don't like, but because it's he's Carl still Urban, a giant asshole in the series, but you know. Yeah. But because of Scar Urban, there's like yeah. some <laughs> there's some kind of, of positive charisma to him that's like, yeah. yeah, I know he's being an asshole right now, but come on. <laughs> he, I think he's a cool guy. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, a pretty good pick to make that role a bit more, I don't know, um, versatile, I guess, and not just be him being a complete asshole, uh, even though the character is kind of written that way. But he's more fun in this than I assume he was in a comic, just in general. Yeah, and you definitely need to latch on to somebody that's, like, likable, which is really hard to do in a comic. Well, in the show. oh, okay. A little bit well, not even, uh, what was her name, Stargirl, or... Um... Stargirl is... is uh, has this was not, think... That was not her name. I, I know it was something yeah, else. She's but... not Stargirl. She's, like, uh, I don't know what she's called. Something, yeah. So, so, something. She's, like, a, a Supergirl-type ripoff. Yeah, uh, Supergirl, yeah, kind of, yeah. And uh, but she has less agency agency oh, in the okay. comic. Like so in the in the show, she's definitely only. more interesting character. So gets a lot more screen time. Yeah, and even Huey is a lot more likable in a TV show, a lot more relatable. And like the main crew of like in the, in the comic, they really go from oh they get dirty and we're gonna get dirtier than them. We gotta be to get somebody that's bad. We have to get worse, mm -hmm. and that's something they don't really hit here. Thank God, because then it's just like not fun to watch. Yeah. If they're like, if the good guys are way worse, even as worse as the bad guys, it's like it's not the durable watch. And here, that's definitely the main thing about this show. It's really enjoyable to watch it. Like it's, it's a blast. Like you can't stop watching it till it's over. You're like, ah, oh, I need more of this. I mean, it's kind. Of, mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of what a lot of adaption. Oh, a lot of adaptions. I'm picking two here, but you know, putting. With, with a lot of these super cynical comic books, or, or with some of these super cynical comic books, they they you know ease up a bit on that when they adapt that to uh, to a movie or series format. The other one that comes to mind is Kick Ass, which I think I think though it went bad there. Like they they made the wrong choice because Kick Ass like turns some of its plot point completely on its head and makes tries to frame some things at, as good that's the, that the comics framed as super fucked up. And that doesn't really work. Like the thing where the the main character in Kick Ass acts uh, like a gay guy to get in, you know, the good graces with with the th a girl he's like, uh, uh, he's got the hots for. And then the uh, at, that, that, at, at, that's, at, mm -hmm. at that's the end of the comic, they should have just get out of the end of the way in general because it's in the comic. It's also bad. Yeah, but in the comics, at the end, he's like he's framed. Uh, you know, he he gets. Uh, 
punched in by the girl because of that. And, you know, uh, in the comic books, uh, in the movie, he actually gets the girl because she's like, oh, that means you really like me. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what the fuck yeah. movie? <laughs> But like it, it, you say that in the movie, it's like not depicted as bad. But in the comic, it's depicted as bad. Yeah. But she's depicted as also bad. Like there's like not really, no, no kind I, of. I recently kind of in the end of the comic, it's like that she's literally sending like uh, nude pictures of herself and her boyfriend as a way to torture him. That's yeah, what in the which is justified because he did a fucked up thing. He deserved that. I'm sorry, but no, that's totally okay. No, she actually sends him a picture of. Her sucking her, her boyfriend's dick, and he jerks off to it, and that's, like said, totally... that's, that's, that's that's also just like super edgy for edgy sake. Like that's the, one of the reasons why Kick Ass Two was so terrible, because they went in, they like to try to uh, uh, correct the ship to go back to like the edgy shit from the comic, which is bad. Because who's that writer again? He's a bad writer. Like I don't like his writing. Mark oh. Millar. Mark Millar. Yes. Like yeah. he has a lot of good adaptations because he's like. He's like a good guy for like pitches or something, but every all of the he's one of the few writers where literally all of his adaptations are way better than the source material. I don't agree. I like the comic book uh, first comic book uh, for Kick Ass better. I know it's super edgy. I know it's super, but just the just the cynicism and the criticism that he put in there worked for me. Like hit home, and it wasn't too grim to not be fun. I don't know how it is for the boys because, like I said, I haven't read the comic book. Oh, I kind of want to do it now to like, see the it's, difference. It's, okay. it's just not fun. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, sure. So that was your comic book whatever discussion for this episode. Let's move on. Uh, but I want to say that I like that writer from The Boys. Like, I like Preacher a lot and some of his other stuff. But yeah. just that, that one, The Boys, is just like, it just didn't hit well. And it's like, it's one of his worst ones. And I know a lot of people do like it, but those are the type of people who just like edgy stuff when it's edgy, you know? Yeah. They, 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 like, the people that like The Boys, the comic... They are now on Twitter complaining about the Snyder Cut from uh, Justice League. That, that's yeah, probably. <laughs> it uh, was did better any, because it was dark. <laughs> did Did any of the boys get sexually abused? Uh, no. Oh well, you're really limiting your Catholic not in uh, the show though. audience. <laughs> All right. Anyway, Bray. Uh, yeah, I've, I've been watching some movies at TV shows as well. I've been uh, <laughs> watching some MCU movies. I've been watching Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which is great. I've been watching uh, Mindhunter, which is good. So Who are those uh, MCU movies? Uh, the Benson Cinematic Universe. Uh, oh, that's sure. Oh, that's sure you missed this. Uh, Sorry, I didn't know. <laughs> is that a thing it's, now? It's, it's just it's just that show and that movie, but uh, that's it. But it's that's enough. That's enough. Uh, it's a, that's a universe. Hitting it out of the gate. Two makes a crowd. Strong. <laughs> but like, I one of the things. I went into Once Upon a Time of, in Hollywood interested in was, oh, they got the same actor to play Manson, who also plays Manson in Mindhunter, right? And it's like, oh, that's kind of fascinating to see, like, two master directors like David Fincher and Tarantino uh, portray the same character by the, played by the same actor. And it's like, oh, I'm going to be really curious what, what they're going to pull off. But he's barely in the movie. Like, you don't even notice him. I watched the movie by my dad, and he's like, oh, it's weird that they didn't even show Manson at all. It's like, no, they didn't show him. For like one scene, but that he's not uh, he's not a character in that movie, at all. But overall, I really enjoyed the movie. Like on Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, it's very light on plot. It's mostly like uh, a hangout movie. Like you're just hanging out with with these characters for like two hours, and these characters are DiCaprio and Brad Pitt in one of their maybe their best performances of all time. Ah, not not all time, but some of their best performances. And they're just like, it's just a blast to watch them go through their day, even though it's like very light on plot. Especially Brad Pitt, who's like playing a, like a retired stunt guy in this. His entire demeanor is really, it's just really funny. And he's just very relaxed. And DiCaprio is like this washed up actor who's like super dramatic and like a whitey bitch every, like, uh, most of the time. And it's really, it's just hilarious. Like <laughs> the way he's just like, crying because like he doesn't want to do spaghetti western movies he's like he feels like he's a washed up actor because nobody in hollywood will hire him except uh, for those italians for the spaghetti western movies and he really doesn't want to go do those and he's just like hey i have like has like a pet peeve about him and it's uh no just in general great movie i really enjoyed it have you guys seen it yet no i'd like to though 
Do you like to? It's not out in Japan. I don't know. I've just uh I haven't had time really to get to the cinema uh, uh, as of recent times. I'm so so busy recently, but it's certainly a movie I would like to go see. Yeah, I've heard you know I've heard the hangout thing before that it's more like sitting together with friends, watching a, a, a relaxing movie and everything. Except the ending seems to go places. Uh... Oh, it definitely goes places. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, but, but it's that's... not it's not that that uh, that much to be honest. It's like not. It doesn't go, compared to other Tarantino movies, it doesn't go crazy or something. Like, the movie it most feels like is actually Jackie Brown, like his other uh, hangout type movie. Mm. And uh, uh, that's one of my favorites. So, okay. I've only that's seen, one of the reasons I liked it so much. I've only tried to watch Jackie Brown once, and that was I was kind of young then, and I fell asleep. So, hmm. uh, <laughs> maybe I should re try to rewatch it. But... Um, uh, that sounds to me like a movie I would rather watch, you know, on a movie night with friends sitting here on my couch and everything. So maybe you know not what? a movie theater, but I, I might watch it. I still haven't watched The Hateful Eight, though, so who knows? I like this better than The Hateful Eight myself. But okay. That's, uh... I love them. I love The Hateful Eight. Um, like Human Metal says, for me, this is probably a movie that I would perhaps like to catch uh, uh you know on dvd or blu-ray or something but um however that said i really really love quentin tarantino i'm a huge fan of his movies and i've never seen any of them in the cinema so i don't know uh you know? supposedly this is the second to last movie so uh take your take your shot while you still have it yeah he doesn't mess around because he he went away for a long time after uh, jackie brown didn't he damn yeah six years it's for kill bill yeah that's that, that's a uh... Yeah, but supposedly he says to himself that he's like, I only got one more movie that I want to make. But directors in general say that all the time. Yeah, Steve, yeah. Like, Steven Soderbergh has like, retired five times and in between, like, when he says he retired and he, he has already has, like, a new movie out. You know what I mean? It's insane. So you never know about these directors. Hayao Miyazaki has said that so many times already, so... <laughs> yeah, it's like more like... He's saying he's retiring. That's like an announcement that he's going to make another movie. Yeah. Retirement <laughs> <laughs> just maybe a longer vacation and then coming back. Yeah. As soon as someone uh, insists that uh, he, he wouldn't have done another good movie anyway. And you're like, oh, I'll show you. And then, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, stuff like that. But <laughs> while Manson is it like a big part of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and he is a, he is a pretty big part in the last season of Mindhunter, which uh, I'm not really a big part. He's like one episode, but in that episode, he actually has the major spotlight for that episode. And it's uh, fascinating. Like that's a lot more real life, uh, a lot closer to what he would be in real life. And it's actually uh, very interesting to watch. And you actually can see how some drugged up uh, uh, hippies would find his, like, his crazy speech and everything uh, appealing. Like you can almost see it. You can actually see one of the main characters who's kind of fascinated by fascinated by him, who's actually kind of falling under a spell for like a few seconds, but only for a few seconds afterwards he's like really realizes what a for how full of shit he is. He was uh, a good talker, apparently. Yeah. And but uh, like most of it's crazy shit. Actually, if you want to see something about Manson, which I find hilarious, there's a uh, uh, there's a sketch where Saul uh, now uh, Bob Odenkirk plays him. For Better Call Saul fame, and yeah. it's like a Lassie uh, parody where, like, <laughs> where Benson is like crazy, talking his crazy talk, right? But everybody treats him like he's like a, a dog from Lassie. <laughs> so it's like he's, <laughs> he's talking his crazy shit about, like, uh, uh, I can't even repeat it because it's so crazy. But then he's like, What is that, Benson? Timmy fell down the well? It's like. <laughs> <laughs> It's a hilarious sketch. Like you should watch that. Like that's my so from Mr. Show or uh, maybe or the Ben Stiller show. I'm not sure, but it's okay. it's uh, it's probably my favorite depiction of Ben in, in any form of media because it's just like <laughs> it kind of shows what he really was, which is like a crazy person. Like it, the stuff he says sounds deep almost until you think about it for more than one second, where it's like, oh no, this is just total nonsense. It makes no sense. Mm. But. Uh, his depiction in, in Mind Hunter is fascinating. And but I think what was more interesting is that afterwards the, the character also interviews one of the uh 
Manson family who does the who actually did the murders, which you can actually talk more about like their state of mind during that time and well like what how they actually saw people that they murdered like they didn't even see them as people they were so messed up and on drugs and just they're just so fucked up that they like that that they really didn't know what was happening almost and that's like a way scarier uh, sequence in my opinion and a way better sequence and uh, yeah. overall this last season it's great it's it's a really good show like it's david fincher like even the side like it's david fincher directs some of the uh, episodes like most of them but even the other directors who direct episodes are like famous directors like the guy who did like uh shit i don't remember but a famous director like there are the other <laughs> like sometimes you have like directors who are like mostly like they direct just direct tv but this is like the guy who direct like uh the jesse james movie from with uh with brad pitt in it Oh, you, okay, yeah. Uh, like those, those are the guys who do the other episodes. Like they're like, they get a lot of talent there. And I like that how this season is almost critical of the viewer because they have a lot of people who are like, uh, when the the main characters talk about the work with outsiders, they're all fascinated by it. They all want to know more. It, like it's kind of like criticizing like our culture with the way we're fascinated by by murder and by. Uh, 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 serial killers and now there's like a lot of like serial killer podcasts around like we're doing as well but like uh, in general like true true crime stuff is huge and they're actually kind of criticizing us for being so fascinated by it even though we're watching a move a TV show about it at the same time so it's kind of interesting the way they do that mm -hmm. and it's probably interesting to like put up the two performances of the Manson actor just right next to each other you know not really like I said he's not really in the, in the movie like at all I, mean, it's, I thought it was going to be interesting but he doesn't really have that much to do in the, in the actual uh, once upon a time in America okay not even like a scene where he goes you know more Tarantino escape shit and then you know I, you have the more somber more disturbing real performance in Mindhunter not really. Okay, that's a shame. <laughs> but supposedly, interested in that. Supposedly, they cut a lot of stuff out, and Tarantino said that he's gonna like release like a mini series cut of Once Upon a Time in oh. America. So that's not a bad idea. So you're probably gonna see more of him in that way. Cool. If if that ever comes to fruition, I I, I also enjoyed uh, Mine Hunter. I think there were probably less. Uh, psychological gains from from this particular season than the last one, and this was sort of more, I want to say, action oriented, but that's not exactly right because there isn't really much action. But they put their they specifically put their training into use, right, to catch. It's it reminded me a lot more of Zodiac, actually, the other David Fincher uh, movie where where it's like a lot of like a procedural where they like really go into depth how they use that in practice and how they try to catch a killer. Yeah, whereas the, the, the first one was more based around the sort of the interviews and the psychological insights to be gleaned from that. This was more about, as you say, like trying to interpret that information into, you know, practical ways, which, which, which was great. But I, I think it did feel a bit more different, direct in there was a goal, a specific, you know, timed goal they were trying to achieve by the end of this which was uh, catch uh, the killer in Atlanta that's uh, that's killing all the children. Look into the real history about that. They kind of botched that one, to be honest, in real life. Um, they kind of papered over it in the, in the in the show, but they kind of botched that because uh, uh, he probably didn't commit those murders. It's uh, or at least that maybe he might have committed a they, couple of them. They say that the that the the guy. The actual FBI guy, where the book is based on, says he believes that they he actually did most of them, but uh, they didn't really prove that, and then didn't yeah. really. Uh, uh, what they also point to in the show is that they don't never convicted him of those murders. They convicted him of different murders, and in the press and stuff, they made it seem like uh, now it's too bad, like we convicted the killer, but they never convicted him of actually of those specific child murders. Yeah, it's uh, actually the case got reopened this year, which is interesting. Um, they're they're re-reviewing all the evidence from it. Um, uh, yeah, but it was it was a really good show. Uh, 
I there was a couple things I really loved about it, which I'll just reel off. Like I love the fact that like after the first season, uh, the character of Ford had his sort of running with Kemper, and then he sort of had this panic attack. I really thought there was going to be a running thread, which was going to be really tiring of him, like repeatedly having panic attacks when faced with serial killers or something. But they didn't go in that direction, which I thought was pretty good. It's like, oh, okay. (laughs) Because I really thought that was going to get old quickly if they were going to go in that direction, and it didn't happen. Um, So I was pleased about that. I also like a small minor scene, which I fucking loved, um, was the scene where his boss retires and Ford gets up to make his speech. Oh, that Um, was so awkward. Yeah. (laughs) I love that, and and the and the ensuing conversation out on his lawn. <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, yeah. So, the, um, but generally speaking, a really, really fantastic, uh, a really fantastic show, and I really wanted them to catch the the, the killer at the end. Because um, man, who doesn't want to a uh, serial killer to be caught who's killing you know like dozens of children? That's crazy. So. Yeah, it's sort of you know I felt a real impetus to get behind the the heroes of the show. Yeah, um, but it, uh, the end of Mind Hunter. What I found interesting is that like in uh, some of the stuff we're going to talk about later, actually, they portray profiling like it's like some kind of superpower almost, like like they can really almost really think what the killer is doing and like they can go into his mind and stuff like that. Uh, and this actually show about the real thing is a lot more critical of the practice like they actually show them making mistakes they have like some scenes where they show like the the btk killer right and then there's like this guy is not going to church even though it's like a church going guy right they, they talk about him like they know already know what like his entire personality is and then they immediately show that they're really wrong they're really off the mark all of the times so i was found it interesting compared to like how media portrays profiling in general yeah, or also like the the much vaunted conversation with Manson ultimately was a fucking bust. Total bust. <laughs> yeah. Completely useless. Like they didn't learn anything from it. No, no, they just lost their cool. It was it was it was awesome though. I enjoyed that very much. Um yeah, so really good stuff. I guess uh, Human Metal, did you watch Mindhunter? The first season, yes. I haven't watched the second yet. Oh, sorry. So, spoiler alert for Human Metal, mm. sorry. We just spoiler, might... spoiler alert for real life. Oh. Yeah. Hey, it's not like <laughs> I know everything about every fucking serial killer case in the US, so I would have been surprised, but it's not a problem. So, I guess, uh, uh, putting on to sort of lighter things, I, I watched some sort of very light entertainment recently, uh, including a bunch of superhero movies which I will quickly give my 50 cents on. I, I watched Shazam, which was um, a very nice, polite, you know, just nice movie, really. Yeah, I don't, uh, it's a good family movie. Yeah, it's not a movie yeah. I think about deeply, but it's like, oh, I had no. a good time with that. It's like, it was a fun, lighthearted uh, uh, movie where it's like, I think a lot of superhero movies go for all, they want to catch everybody. Everybody needs to enjoy this. And I think this movie is definitely more aimed at kids. Like sometimes a comic book movie should be. The the one problem I had with I loved I loved the finale. Just to say that I thought the payoff for that was really great. Uh, I thought that they there was an inconsistency between the kid and uh, what's his what's the guy um, Levi Zachary Zachary, Zachary Levi. Levi playing a kid as Shazam, like trying to play that kid because that kid behaved completely differently from, you know, him as Shazam, who's supposed to be the same kid. He Zachary Levi acted much more, you know, like a kid, over something, <laughs> like a kid than the actual kid did. That was because, like, you know, has a tra- kind of tra- tragic backstory and is more moody and a bit more emo. And Zachary Levi is like the super hyper, la la la, uh, crazy dude uh, who very clownish and slapsticky and, and like... That's not how that kid acted at all. <laughs> it's not the same person. Okay. But aside from that, it was a fun movie. So. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I-, I wish they gave Mark Strong a bit more to get his teeth into. But um... Yeah. But but that's what you hire Mark Strong for. Like, you need a villain, but you don't want to spend too much time in the script to them. You just need to hire somebody who looks like a villain. It's like, oh, yeah, I've already did enough. We hired Mark Strong. <laughs> yeah. You don't need anything more than anything else. He looks like a villain. He's convincing like, just by existing. Yes, <laughs> Mark Strong is awesome. Um, 
so that that was fun. Uh, a much a much more satisfying uh, uh, film for me though was Aquaman, which I also watched. I was I to be honest, that caught me by surprise because I really didn't expect anything from Aquaman, having suffered through the Justice League um, and Batman versus Superman. So I wasn't really expecting anything from that, but actually was really pleasantly surprised and really enjoyed the kind of science fiction world that they made in that. It's very rare to see filmmakers go all out for the, the, the grandstanding old style kind of SF world. I mean, this, it may be excluding perhaps the Marvel films, but like oh, they even went... That's definitely what I would describe this movie. They definitely went all out. They yeah. went crazy yeah. with this movie. But you were expecting was... that this movie would have uh, an octopus that drums? You didn't expect that? <laughs> nope. uh, I expect no. that from an Ariel movie, but not... I feel like in general this movie feels much more daring than most of the Marvel, uh, Marvel movies do. Like it felt like, okay, if we're gonna go, if we're gonna try this crazy bullshit with some Atlantean prince whatever, and we're gonna create this fucking world, let's go all in and let's try our darnest to make this look visually impressive. And they, damn, if if they did, they went crazy just putting CG bodies on all the making this weird effect that they're supposed to be underwater and everything. <laughs> and it looks super weird at first, but after a while just everything on screen just you're being bombarded with super interesting visual effects and super cool ideas just for how that underwater world is supposed to look and I, I, I just from a visual standpoint the story is all right but just from a visual standpoint I thought that movie was fucking fantastic just that the right makes just like Choo Choo said of great sci-fi great fantasy world just everything that works fits together works perfectly the, the designs of the armors of the uh, armor of the uh, Atlanteans and everything, everything in that movie looks super cool in my opinion. Even the fucking black manta, manta with the giant fucking helmet they put that in there, <laughs> and it fucking works. I love it. <laughs> oh, that movie looks so fucking good. Just fantastic uh, design. Great. But what did yeah. you think James Cameron thought of the movie? Ah, uh, he probably loved it. Yeah, <laughs> it's a great yeah. underwater movie. Well, <laughs> He's probably he... envious that he didn't do it. Yeah, he only got and... to do it in Entourage. So. <laughs> <laughs> Any, basically anything with fish is just james cameron's best uh best movie of all time but like like uh, as people. a kid as as a kid like growing up in the 80s this was like this felt like 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 watching like crawl or something like those kind of like high fantasy movies yeah. that you get a whole bunch of back in the 80s i love that about this high yeah, concept b great. movies with weirdly a uh, high budget <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, this one has definitely weirdly extremely high budget you no know? like like I, I expected almost if this movie was like made five years ago even i expected like 90 percent of the movie would be on lead but now like for some reason it's like oh but just go fuck it like just go all in go full on the water all the time have like everybody's hot hair in cgi because we can't yeah. pay, make a way think of a way to film with hair so if either everybody has cgi hair like it's insane and it's not it's <laughs> the story is dumb but it's not boring like it's it's a pretty oh. brisk pace and everything and it works well and you know jace momar say about it uh, his acting what you want he always plays like the bro type but you know he's fun and has cinematic with uh, with the female main uh, character is great too and so yeah it's just a fun movie it's just a fun dumb very good looking very expensive looking movie and yeah i i actually looking forward to the second one i got that one actually on 4k blu-ray because i want to see that shit in hdr so uh yeah it's i think just from a visuals al alone i i actually was kind of mad at myself that i didn't catch it in the movie theater i was like yeah. man i should have watched that on the big screen because that's one of those movies where it's like yeah that should be seen that should be watched on the big screen i was kind of Fuck. disappointed that i didn't have a chance to see it in imax because that's like an imax movie for me. yeah definitely that's a big big feeling movie like there are a lot of scenes in there like spectacle scenes where like shit that was made for the big screen and i didn't i for some reason i couldn't convince myself to watch it in the movie theater and i deeply regretted it so hmm. well, what can well, you do? Yeah, I, I, well actually i feel exactly the same way like if i had known how good that film was i would have gone and see it in the cinema yeah me it too was, it was a really fun time i think the best thing i can say about how good that film was is that it had um i got so tired of seeing huge like giant cgi on cgi battles but aquaman was good enough to pull that off and not make it boring so that was that was great yeah. you know at the end of that giant battle right the giant mm -hmm. battle scene 
yeah, I went in with a completely different feeling for that battle. I was like, hey, this is really cool. <laughs> what's yeah. going on here? Well, I, I guess, the, that shit before. Like, I guess oh. the secret ingredient is throwing in a giant uh, Lovecraftian uh, monster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every story can do with that. And I guess I'll, I was talk uh, two seconds about the final superhero movie I watched just because we talked about it on I think it was the last episode maybe slightly I watched Into the Spider Verse finally ah um, which was fun yeah which was a lot of fun and surprisingly emotional um, yeah 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 it's you know it's the Spider Man movie that made the least amount of money oh that that tells you everything movies? the world is unjust. <laughs> So there you go, but it's yeah, it's a fantastic movie. I, I I love it. I hope they, I hope it made enough money that they do more with that team with that part of the franchise. I I really hope they do because otherwise that would be such a fucking waste. But yeah, I think the, I, I'm glad you liked it. I think that the put the, there's a the post credit scene which I I won't spoil in case people haven't seen. It. <laughs> My God, that. That made me piss myself. That made me <laughs> laugh so fucking hard. <laughs> the memes are real. That that's what kind of funny. Like in the movie theater, it really like shows the, the people that actually watch memes and stuff, and the people yeah. who don't. Because I was cracking up, and like some people, other people were cracking up, but some others were like completely stone faced because they have no clue what the fuck was going on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just overall, the humor in that movie is fantastic. All right, and with that, we're gonna move out the shadows. And into the depths. Welcome down to the depths. So today on the depths, we're going to be talking about murder. Uh, mostly how to murder human metal. No. We're not going to be talking about that. How is that different we... from every other episode? Yeah, that seem, doesn't seem that hard. I think uh, I part one, cut it out, but... don't talk about it on a podcast. They have leave no trail like that. Mm-hmm. So that's already fucked up You're there. You're breaking your oral new, own rules, yeah. Well, the thing is, if we, if we explicitly talk and joke a lot about murdering human metal, you know, like maybe tying a belt around ah, him. And, like, hiding in plain sight, I get it. Mm. Exactly, it works. you know what I mean? I don't think that works at all. It's just Probably leaving fingerprints not. all over the murder scene, and then you eliminate yourself by. They just say no killer would leave this many fingerprints. Yeah. <laughs> no killer would be this bad as killing people. So I got very strong spiritual powers. So if you guys kill me, I will haunt you. You don't want a tall German guy haunting you. And when I'm See, dead, I'm probably I don't want naked. Any guy haunting me. I'm See, probably I'm naked when I'm to... dead. I'll haunt I, you. I would. Well, maybe, but I would just tune you out, just like when you're talking about Mega Man. Um, hmm. just, <laughs> I'll talk. I'll talk about Mega Man the entire time, <laughs> every day, and you won't be able to tune me out because I'm in your head. No chance. No mute button on a ghost. Anyway, what? The, uh, murder. Back to the uh, to the original thought. Yes, murder. We are going to be talking about well, serial killers in particular, or serial killer. Uh, media. I think in this particular show, I think we've we've all chosen movies. So basically, serial killer movies is going to be a um, uh, topic of the day. So we've each chosen two pieces of serial killer media to dig into. So let's uh, get our shovels out and dig away, and then throw human metals, naked dead corpse in there. Why would be naked? I don't know. German yeah, why, people. Why because you you're involved. Because he said he'd be naked if he's a ghost. As a ghost, he... not before ghost. that. God damn it! Oh, I don't uh, know. You, you Germans are nudists, on yeah, fucking. But by the way, you that's can't even East Germany. Me. I live in West Germany. If you're dead, you get it right. Put glasses on, so you can't see much. Oh, I'm sorry. Put up the wall because all the naked people live on one side. Yeah, all the smart <laughs> too. <laughs> anyway, yeah. human metal, you're up first. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it just cracks me up. Uh, anyway, so my first pick of uh, serial killer media is From Hell, which is a movie that uh, features Johnny Depp because, before he got really popular again, I'd say. And um, that uh, is based on a comic book by Alan Moore, you know, the guy behind Watchmen, which I haven't read. I mean, I've read the Watchmen, comic? but not. F- I've, I've read From Hell, the comic. 
so I don't know how close the uh, the adaption is to the actual source material. I've heard Alan Moore complained ab uh, about the adaption in that they changed the main character, uh, Johnny Depp's character. What's his name in the movie? I think Elodine or something. Eberlein, Eberlein. Uh, Frederick Eberlein. Hey! <laughs> Great. Uh, a non-shitty character with my first name. I, I love it. So... Uh, yeah, he uh, he apparently is, is more sympathetic, less gruff in the movie. Um, more on drugs, though, than in the comic book. <laughs> Absinthe, I mean, they had uh, to film sniffler. without Johnny Depp, so it makes sense. Yeah, 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 I guess. Uh, well, Johnny Depp beat his wife, didn't he? So, well, sympathetic is a strong word. But, uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, let's not talk about domestic abuse. Let's talk about serial killers. So this story is about uh, Jack the Ripper, or a version of the Jack the Ripper story, because I th in this movie, uh, Jack the Ripper is more a cooked up myth by uh, to cover up an illegitimate royal baby. I think that's how it works, because, you know, Prince Albert something, Prince Albert Victor or something, Duke of something, um, had an illegitimate chi uh, child with a prostitute, I think, and to cover that up, uh, the, uh, the people... Uh, in power, send out this this uh, this doctor who just performs ritualistic murder on uh, prostitutes to make it look like a serial killing. And uh, Johnny Depp's character is the <coughs> guy from the police who investigates the whole shit and tries to uncover the truth. So, of course, it's fantasy fiction, right? Uh, probably. <laughs> Uh, though, I mean, probably. You, know, uh, yeah. you just explain yeah. the plot, and it's really not sounding very realistic when you no, put it's in not. No, it's not. No, like that. <laughs> Johnny Depp wasn't even alive back it's, then. It's it's a story because I mean, it's set in a in a real setting. I mean, the Jack the Ripper murders happened, but he never got caught. Uh, I don't no. know if, if someone got caught that that uh, that the blame got put onto. I don't remember if that actually happened, but uh, no. I think there the the evidence was inconclusive. So yeah, no. the murders no. happened. No. Hmm? Nobody was uh, sorry. I just know the history because I'm from England. Nobody ever. Yeah, got please enlighten us. Back the Ripper. Nobody ever got arrested for it. Uh, so there you go. So those murder ha murders happened, and it is not clear who actually committed these murders. And this movie is picking up a theory by uh, some guy called Stephen Knight, which was um, some kind of I don't know, British journalist, author, poet, a mix of a bunch of things, who wrote a book uh, about the theory that you know this was actually all a big conspiracy that tried to. Um, uh, uh, cover up, you know, an illegitimate uh, child and everything, and the stonemasons and shit like that were involved. I don't know, some crazy cooked up shit. But uh, yeah, so Elmo wrote a comic book about that, and then this got turned in, uh, into the movie, um, which was directed by the Hughes brothers, uh, who haven't really done, I think, anything I like, great. Uh, Menace Book to Eli, Society, but... I think, was I a pretty like good Book, movie. But I gotta then... like Book of Eli. I haven't seen Book of Eli. I heard mixed things about it. The book by uh, the, the last movie I saw, I didn't even know he made that. By by one of the brothers was Alpha. And boy, that was a shit tier movie. Holy fuck! That was one wow. of the brothers. Like you need two brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. know, I know, I know. You know, you can't have one without the other. True. Maybe that was a problem. But just saying. So I guess from the movies I've seen of them, uh, I which were only two, I guess I like uh, from Hell the most. Uh, another uh, competition, but yeah, still, I think um, not necessarily because of the story, even though it's kind of fun, moody horror stuff. But I really like the characters and the actors. Um, Johnny Depp is fun in this; uh, is entertaining. Ian Holm is uh, the Jack the Ripper guy, or the guy who commits the Jack the Ripper murders, and he's great as always. And uh, yeah, Heather Gra Graham is is good in this too. So I like the cast. Um, it's just, you know, a bit dumb in terms of the story. But And I also like the set design. I think this is it's a pretty good-looking movie, as far as I remember. It's been a few years since I've seen it. But I remember really enjoying pretty much everything about that movie, except for maybe parts of the story, because it oh. gets really over the top and stupid by the end, and it's like, oh, maybe he was actually possessed by a demon, and his eyes turn completely black and shit like that. And I, I, I hear this the story in the comic goes a bit crazy in that regard as well. But like I said, I haven't read it. But still, enjoyable movie in my opinion. Interesting spin off one of the most famous serial killer cases in existence, and one of the most uh, um, um, iconic names uh, when it comes to serial killers. So 
there you go. I think I don't know if it holds up for everyone, but I'd like to revisit it uh, in the near future and see if the parts that I liked about it originally still hold up. So yeah, from hell. I've only seen it once, and I was in the back of a school bus while we're on yeah. a school trip to London. That's the only time I've seen it. But I did do a, wow. a, a, a Jack the Ripper tour there, which is fun. I I I have seen that film maybe I think about three times. So perhaps I know it a bit better than Bragg does. But um, yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you, Hugh Metal. That's a bad film. It's just Probably. Not good. <laughs> Still, <laughs> like I said, the the things the things that I liked about it are not necessarily the things that you would you know put uh, into the folder. Where it's like, yeah, that's because it's th that's why it's a good movie. So <laughs> it's more the production side of things than the actual story. So I, there you go. I think because I'm from the country, like yeah, maybe it's, yeah. It's, it's perhaps it's set design or world design was like. It's, felt sort of weirdly inauthentic and his plot line was like really uh, really hocus like yeah so i think uh, as a person from the country you know who's a, who's more familiar with it i was just sort of rolling my eyes at that film for the majority of it but um so yeah i mean it's always nice to see ian Holm in anything so um i could i could totally relate to that because just when you say that i have to remember the scene from a team where they are in Frankfurt and it's showing the Dome of Cologne and I'm like, come on, what the fuck? <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah they, you know, it's people from other countries who try to make, you know, movies that are set in other countries. It not always works out. So maybe that's the same for From Hell, but I don't know because I'm not, you know, from London. So my, also not from my, that time period. <laughs> my favorite scene of uh, any Jack the Ripper in any film ever is the one from, uh, what's it, uh, Shanghai Nights. Is brilliant, hilarious. <laughs> I don't remember that scene. I like Shanghai Nights though. Yeah, Shanghai. Do you, remember, you don't remember the Chinese girl is getting all angry because she's just had a fight with uh, uh, brother or, and her boyfriend or whatever, and she's fuming on this bridge. And then uh, Jack the Ripper comes up to us, nice night, isn't it? And then he tries to get her, and she kicks the shit out of him and, and kicks <laughs> him into the <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't remember that, but now I want to rewatch Shanghai. Noon and Shanghai Nights. <laughs> I love those movies. So, Brack, what's uh, what's first up on your serial killer list? Human Metal? Uh, no, no, he's on the first victim uh, list. That's for sure. <laughs> confused me there for a second. <laughs> uh, the first movie on my list is The Talented Mr. Ripley. I'm not sure if you guys seen that movie, but it's... Uh, Ages. It's a great movie. I really love that movie. But it's... Uh, Matt, you actually... It's filmed from the point of view of the killer. He's picking this Blu-ray up. He's showing the Blu-ray to us on the camera. He's pointing at it. He's, he's proud. He's smiling. He's laughing. He's so happy we're talking about that. This is Mr. Ripley right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But um, it's the movie is actually about a, a con man who is like trying to con this this uh, this couple out of money or something. He's like he's trying to worm his way into their lives. Wait, no? Yeah, he is trying to run his way into his life into their lives. Like he's he's gets paid by the father to bring the son home, who's like this rich kid who's living his life in Italy, who's just like trying to be like living a life of luxury. And our main character, played by Matt Damon, is really like fascinated by that life. He really wants that high society type of lifestyle. And for most of the movie, you're actually kind of on his side. Like he's kind of a creepo a little bit, but you're like, oh, I can understand. Like, uh, I don't really feel bad about a guy who's like conning like rich people, uh, you know. But then uh, he really takes a turn when he murders one of the people, and then you can see how far he's willing to go to to get that lifestyle, to keep that lifestyle, and uh, uh, including murdering people. And he does so b multiple times throughout the movie. I don't think he is like. Technically, he's not like what we see from serial killers in movies where he's not like enjoying the killing. He's not doing it for the killing, but he's doing it to get... Uh, it's like a tool for him to get further ahead in life. No? Juju is pointing, is saying no. He's not talking, um, but he's like making really weird facial expressions. Well, I, 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 think, you, I think you misunderstood the plot there, Bracker, slightly. So the first guy he murders... It's, it's an um, act of passion. Because he lost. It's it. an act of passion. Yeah, yes. Because it's it's a love. It's a it's a crime of passion, right? And a, and a crime of anger. Then uh, the other people he kills, he kills through 
necessity, not really so much to get ahead in life, but to stop himself getting caught. They are sort of uh, uh, a thing of self-defense. One guy he kills because he basically makes him. The left and guy is definitely guy, not out of self-defense. That's uh, to be honest. Ah, uh, but it, but it is. It is. It is it, to keep his like uh, to not get caught, or at least to yeah, exactly. Uh, that's what but I mean. It's self. It's definitely not self-defense. No, it's not self-defense. As in, like like someone's attacking him, but it's self-preservation. Sorry, like so he he doesn't murder. It's not like he's murdering people for their money or something, or or to make his life more extravagant or something. I think he's like spiraling out of control. That's like a like a guy like unraveling, right, and spiraling out of control. He's digging himself deeper. This this hole that he's getting into. Um, but so he ends up killing. So I re- I really love that movie, by the way. I, I love the movie as well. I think the interesting thing <laughs> is that you're actually for a lot of the movie you're on his side. Like it feels yeah. a lot to me like. Catch me if you can. If you if you remember that movie, also one of my favorites, where it's like, oh, you're actually on this guy's side. I know he's doing so bad things, but you're on his side because you really feel like you're in that hole with him. You're like, ah, oh, you see the noose tightening around his neck. He's like, oh, I hope he's gonna get out of it. Even though that's not what you should hope. You should hope he's gonna get caught because he's a really bad person. Yeah, well, yeah, but obviously that's slightly different. Um... Frank Abagnale Jr. didn't actually no, kill no. anybody. <laughs> no, that's, that's what I mean. That's why I think it starts a lot like Catch Me If You Can about these young con men who are trying to like get oh. ahead in life, right? But so it's for that part of it, you're really supporting them because like, oh, I, I can feel, I understand that situation a bit. I, can, I feel like I get a motivation and I can see what they try to get out of it. But then in Catch Me If You Can, he's just going on the same way. But in uh, yeah. Tell the Miss Ripley, he makes that big left turn where he actually murders the one person, even though it's a crowd of passion. But he then he murdered that person and then uses that situation or tried to use that situation to get ahead. Well, somewhere there's a really dark director's cut of Catch Me If You Can, where <laughs> <laughs> Tom Hanks is like waiting in his office or something, waiting for Frank to, 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 to return from his trip. And then basically he just comes up behind him with a bit of cheese wire and just kills him right there in the office. Just strangles Tom Hanks to death. Mm. Anyway, continue. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's uh, the other Tom, Tom Ripley. <laughs> no, uh, like I said, I really, I watched this movie at a young age when I first watched it. Uh, maybe not, I was a little bit too young to watch it, but I was already immediately like fascinated by uh, by the movie, by like this character who is like, uh, you really kind of really support him watching him while watching him for the first time because he's the main character. And like in the movie, always, almost always, like you're attached to the main character. But like, it's really like a cat and mouse type of game and you really kind of want him to get out of the situation. Like you kind of support him getting away with it, even though it's such a bad thing. He's like such a like kind of charismatic character a lot. So it's weird to see a movie like this where you're supporting a person who's so bad. He's so evil. Well, he's not, that's the, well, mm, I think like, like, uh, I think he is definitely a sociopath. Oh yeah, well, the, I think like there's a switch though, because the first person he kills, like like, is out of passion, right? Because you like, and you can kind of understand that. I mean, that guy wasn't a very nice person anyway, and treated Tom, you know, quite badly. And then you have the next guy he kills, who was a douchebag, a straight up douchebag. So you just don't like him. So okay, that's you know, he kills him. That's really bad, but you know, it's like it's not, it's not the worst thing. But then he goes off the rails, and through like the final parts of the film. He's yeah, he's walking on dangerous ground. Especially the best scene in the movie is also the most terrifying and the most sociopathic one, where he realizes he's gonna have to kill spoiler alert, by the way, for talented Mr. Ripley. He he realizes he's gonna have to kill um uh uh Gwyneth Paltrow, right? And so he's got his razor and he's walking towards her in his dressing gown, saying telling her like how much he loves her. Meanwhile, he's got the razor in his pocket. And he like the blood because he's cut his finger. The blood is like seeping, and Gwyneth Paltrow knows he's gonna kill her. I thought the last but person he kills was uh, Jack. Uh, no, 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 he Davenport. Yeah, no, he he doesn't kill uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. He's going to. He's in the he's in the process of doing it when uh, Jack Davenport knocks on the door and basically saves Gwyneth Paltrow from him. 
like that's the best scene in the film that's really really intense you know he's saying he's walking towards her saying you know really slowly saying you know i love you you know put that in your pocket and save it for a rainy day meanwhile he's like hanging on to the razor which has cut his finger and like blood's like seeping all over his white dressing gown it's awesome and scary and just like that's the moment I think it turns. He's just like, this guy's a fucking psychopath. Right. Like, but I think he's a straight up maniac. The, the moment he definitely became like a monster was with when he kills uh, uh, Jack Davenport's character, who is like his lover at that point, and he's all and who's almost like he knows that he's lying, right? But the way the character plays it, like it make it seem like he's trying to, like. Uh, 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 look past the fact that he's lying, right? He he's talking about him, how how much he loves him, and how much the what the things he likes about him. And then you hear that audio playing while you're in the next scene where Matt Damon is alone in his room, and you still hear him talking and hearing like strangling him. And it's a really like emotional, tense, scary sequence yeah. where he truly becomes like a a monster, a monster. Well, the thing is, during that scene, he accepts that he's going to become a monster. He was saying, you know, I'm you know, I'm never going to be free of this and this is my punishment. You know, he he literally says that as he murders him. So like murdering he get he gets to he has to sort of murder the guy he loves basically and who loves him. He's like shot at happiness and redemption is through that guy and then through the course of his own actions he has to murder the guy he loves and that's kind of his like, you know, his punishment for doing what he's done in that film, you know, and that's also the moment, like you say, he really becomes a monster, but he like accepts that about himself as well, which is like awful. It's really depressing and awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, it's a great Sorry. movie. I love and, it. Uh, uh, they also made lots of sequels, but uh, without Matt David, which I haven't seen yet. And I was always fascinated about it. Like, I know there's based on multiple books, and I look on Wikipedia what the plots are of those other books. And it's completely bonkers and ridiculous. It's like, okay, maybe, maybe I should just stick to this just this one movie and not watch or read anything else. I've seen Ripley's Game with Tom Malkovich. Uh, John, Tom Malkovich? John Malkovich. <laughs> it, it wasn't good. I'm just saying. It just wasn't a good film. Yeah. I know there's like one with Barry Pepper as uh, <laughs> Tom Ripley, and I just don't want to see that. That sounds bad. <laughs> Is that the guy who played the Flash? No, no, no. Uh, it's the guy from uh, Save Private Ryan and stuff. Oh. You know Barry Pepper, right? Like you, you can if you see his face, you recognize him. What's what's the name of the 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 character of the Flash? What's his real name? Barry Allen. Barry Allen. Barry Allen. Okay, I'm just hearing Barry Pepper, and I'm just seeing the Flash. <laughs> Completely the same. <laughs> same things. Yes. Uh, you no, know, I heard stuff. that movie is terrible, and the books also sound kind of ridiculous after the first one. Where yeah, he... parents read all the books, uh, but I don't know if they liked the other ones as much as they did the first one. Is... I know he I runs say... in, like, has, like, running with the mafia at some point. <laughs> I think oh, this sounds really, really weird. Sure. Like, I, I do kind of want to see a movie where a serial killer is going after the mafia. Don't get me wrong. That sounds like a fun uh, fun movie, but I don't see it with this character. That's that's, that's almost kind of what happens with uh, Hannibal Rising, isn't it? He definitely goes after some bad guys in that movie, but yeah. All right, what? That, that, hey, what a segue, because it's my turn, and I'm going to talk about Hannibal. Hey. Oh, nice. I really love Matt Mickelson. That's a great TV show. I'm not sure about the movie, though, but that TV show, that's something, really. Well, I don't know about that TV show, so <laughs> kiss my sweet, my squeeze scallop balls. But uh, I am a huge fan of the um, of the Ridley Scott movie, Hannibal. Um, more so, actually, than either Silence of the Lambs or uh, Red Dragon. What? Uh, that sounds too yeah. bonkers to me. Yeah, exactly. That sounds like a wrong opinion. I know it sounds like a wrong opinion. I know, like, like I, I can understand to... people that like the TV show better than the movie. I can understand it. I don't agree with it, but I can understand it. But, but, but Hannibal, really? Hmm. Yeah, Hannibal is awesome. Like, uh, I don't know. So that there are there are a few reasons I I love uh, Hannibal. Um, firstly, it's directed by Ridley Scott, and it's beautiful. And there are many fantastic uh memorable scenes in that film um guts in or guts out would you permit are you confused would you permit me to decide like it's brilliant serial killer stuff uh plus it's like it's 
Ridley Scott directing like a really sort of like high class film. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I can't really explain what I'm trying high to say. High society, you mean? Or... Yeah, exactly. Like high society. He's got the he's got Rome, right? And the kind of upper class aristocracy style of thing going on there. And it's all that classical music and sweeping vistas of beautiful places. And like, I don't know, man, that really, really gets me. And I, I really, really love it. And I love the main story of the way that Hannibal is in love with uh, with uh, Juliet Moore's character, you know, who's obviously taken over from Jodie Foster um, from Silence of the Lambs. Like, I really love that love story. And it's like, it's really convincingly made. Um, and there are many, many like exciting scenes where like Hannibal sort of sacrifices himself to protect her and stuff. And it has one of the best like climaxes of any serial killer uh, film at the party, you know, where he's got radio to his like the sexist bigoted prick <laughs> and is literally frying his brain right in front of him. Um, that's an absolutely incredible scene. And I just, I just love it. And I love he the makes, way that, yeah. He makes him eat his own brain too, I think. Yeah, he does. That's brilliant. <laughs> he makes him eat his own and brain. later he offers it to a kid on a plane. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> that's a fucked up movie. Mm. Want to try it? I, I did like uh, the moment that the Fisher had of all wares in Italy, but yeah, that's about it. I, I loved it. Before. I loved the scene where he. Uh, my favorite scene in that film, uh, in that film, apart from I know, no, my favorite scene is actually the one where he disembowels the detective because that's just cool. Do you remember? He's got, he's got, he yeah. basically throws the detective out of the window like and all of his guts spill out into the floor. that's awesome but my other favorite scene is the scene where he is actually caught by clary starling at the end of the film um he's kind of like got her hair in the refrigerator and she handcuffs him and then he has to choose whether to cut you know he's saying to her you know i'm gonna have to cut your hand off here so would you like it above the wrist or below the wrist like and in the last moment of like romantic uh sacrifice he instead of cutting her hand he basically cuts off his own hand with a cleaver that's just awesome man that's just brilliant and you got all the classical music and the fireworks going off i'm just a sucker for that shit i think it's brilliant i think it's one of the most romantic movies ever made brilliant date film <laughs> this is just scary like i wouldn't put that on your daily profile that's all i'm saying mm, that was a, a putting an interesting spin or, or light uh, spotlight on your lo love life so yeah all right what's in your scripture that? reading I just want to know. What's in the ship you're eating? Is it you way too much was happy. <laughs> Being real, that's uh, the truth of it. What do you mean? Mm. Human flesh? Yeah, so sure. Human flesh flavored uh, uh, potato chips. But Is it long what? pig flavored potato chips? Is that what you're saying? Are you calling long my girlfriend's pig, yes. pigs? Man, I'm going to fly to the Netherlands. And I'm kick just you saying in the face. long pig. That's what they say about you when they eat it. <laughs> oh man but um what I'm, what what i'm getting at with hannibal is like i really really find it deeply romantic there's something about that film there's something about the relationship between him and clary starling that i find like oddly compelling and kind of like really like genuinely romantic which is odd <laughs> yeah that, that is odd but it's, maybe, it's kind of... <laughs> yeah it kind of fits me doesn't it maybe i'm a, I'm a closet sociopath no but i kind of find it funny because i know uh, that there are a lot of people who find the same thing about the TV show Hannibal. Like, yeah. it, but it's a level. Like, I remember that once I once posted something on Twitter, which was like something about Hannibal, like like something uh, positive about Hannibal, right? And it got picked up by some Hannibal fan people. Huh? And then I was like, oh, I didn't post much on Twitter at that point. So I looked at their profiles. And it's just like weird. Like, it's so weird. <laughs> like, they're all like pro Hannibal. And they had like Hannibal, like the character Hannibal, and their hearts around him and stuff like that. And then like few photos. People that had like pictures with Matt Mickelson. And like, oh, <laughs> and people were like, oh. one of them was Hideo Kojima. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, almost, maybe. <laughs> but it's like they really like, they were into the romance in, in Hannibal, like between. Uh, uh, Will Graham and, and Hannibal, they're really into it. And it's like, oh, yes, I hope they're going to be happy together at the end, stuff like that. It's like, oh, this is this is really weird. I love Most that show. I've not watched the movie, movies. <laughs> but it's kind of like uh, curious. Like, people were really, really hoping this good old serial killer will find some love at the end. Like, oh, that's good. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I, I yeah. Super about the movie though. Really? Does none of you got any love for the Hannibal movie? I wouldn't say oh. not any love. I would still consider it to be the weakest of the three um, um, Hannibal Lecter movies. You're out of your fucking mind. There is okay. Silence of the Lambs. All right. Perhaps. It's definitely better than Hannibal Rising, though. Yeah, it's definitely better than that. But it's, I wouldn't it's, even it's, count that because he's not in that. I, I mean, there's, Anthony there's, Hopkins is. No fucking way that Hannibal is like is less good than uh, Red Dragon. No way. Sorry, right. I liked Red Dragon more. I thought Ralph Fiennes was a compelling uh, Tooth Fairy impersonation version of that, and uh, yeah. I, Anthony Hopkins is still in it. And um, what's his face? Uh, Edward Norton is cool uh, in two as Will Graham. I like the cast of that, and I like the story, uh, the way they portray, um, adapted that story. So, Ray mm. Fine, Ray Fines was awesome for sure. Yes. See, I, I think I think uh, actually, Red Dragon gets uh, hurt more by the fact that Hannibal, the TV show, adapts that storyline as well, and it does it so much better. So, that's one of the reasons I still need why to watch I think that part of the TV I don't show. really. Uh, care about red dragon even less but in general my favorite version of the Hannibal character outside of like uh, sounds of the lambs is definitely in the tv show and i would definitely watch the tv show over any of those movies uh, things we st- things we have established today brack is a big fan of hannibal the tv show <laughs> it's, uh, it's literally one of my favorite shows and i, I actually was going to pick that until i saw oh, you picked hannibal i don't have to pick Hannibal anymore but it was the movie <laughs> Uh, uh, TV show. It's definitely, it's definitely. Well, I would still, I would say the um, TV show is definitely visually more interesting, oh, yeah. and compelling than than the movie and than any of the movies. Fuck off! Yeah, oh True. damn, that show Sorry. looks amazing, and I think yes. the way it depicts, like their depiction of serial killers, is like super high art, uh, misunderstood artist in a way. It's like really, really interesting to see. And the, some of the of some of the murder scenes are so fuck are so fucked up, but still look so fucking interesting. And it's so disturbing how good looking they make the f- food that Hannibal oh, yeah. makes in that fucking show, and you know it's human flesh, and it looks so fucking delicious. And you're like, <laughs> ah, fuck! Like I said, like, that's like, not good. <laughs> he definitely don't makes, do that. It definitely makes makes. Uh, 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 the Hannibal from Silence of the Lambs looked like a McDonald's line line chef in comparison oh, yeah. to his like a high chef art. <laughs> food well, he didn't have much to work with in prison, to be fair. True, that's so, true. so a couple of guys' faces. Uh, but yeah. the, the way they depict, like in that show, they depict serial killers as artists who like use human bodies as their paint, and it's like kind of weirdly fascinating and grotesque. Like there's like uh, so one scene where they a guy who kills like multiple people and then like puts the bodies in a way where it's like changes the color like a gradient almost it's like oh this is really gross but also fascinating and weird to see Brian Fuller just has a fantastic eye for stuff <laughs> like this looks super cool and um his the first season of American Gods looked super cool which he was also responsible for and um even Star Trek um, Discovery, just in terms of, you know, looking, I, I don't like the story of that series that much, but I think it's the most visually impressive Star Trek thing I've ever seen. So there you go. That guy just knows how to do his visuals or, I don't know, the, uh, get the people who are responsible for that because all the shows that he's involved uh, in as a director and writer look fucking fantastic. So there you go. So, are you saying that Ridley Scott doesn't have eyes for good visuals? I never said, I would <laughs> never say that. I just say, I would still say that those, that the TV show looks better. I'm sorry. I love, I love, mm. if, if, if there's anything about Ridley Scott movies I consistently love, it's the visuals and the production values and everything. And I think those are great in the movies, in Silence of the Lambs, in Hannibal, and in Red Dragon. Still think the uh, TV show looks more interesting. Sorry. All right. Fair it's, enough. It's, well, I, I, in my opinion, it's one of the officially most impressive pieces of media. Literally, Hannibal. It's like insane the way that looks. So, yeah, I, I agree with that as well. I agree. Well, I, I, I ha- I've never seen Hannibal, the TV show, but. Uh, you should. I, yeah, well, yes, I'm, I'm thinking I should probably check that out. If uh, Although they don't have it on Netflix over here, which sucks. Um, 
So the DVDs but, yeah, shouldn't be that that expensive anymore. Well, I, I think I can rent them from the video shop, perhaps. But I, I have to check that out. I am interested to watch Hannibal. I do like Mads Mikkelsen, so, and I I love the character of Hannibal. He's awesome. Um, He's great. All right, nature. so. Yeah, Human Metal White is next on your list. Next, uh, back to Ridley basics. Scott Ridley Scott rules. Sorry. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Nobody disagreed with no. you. What? No. The only uh, people who would disagree with you is the people who only movie they've saw son from him, seen from him would be Robin Hood. Like those people who only seen Robin Hood, they did like, yeah, no, Ridley Scott kind of sucks. But if they saw other movies from him, oh, they would disagree with them. Okay, let's well, not, firstly, let's not open they, up that discussion again. <laughs> hang on, we need to open up that discussion because the council. No, we don't. No, we don't. We really don't. Oh. We had this discussion at least twice on this podcast right. extensively. Okay, okay. Robin Hood so, rules. Robin Hood rules. All right. Uh, so I'm gonna actually talk about two movies now, which are basically the same movie uh, because one is a remake of the other, and that's The Hitcher. Uh, one uh, was the first one was made in 1986, uh, starring uh, now sadly deceased uh, Rutger Hauer um, as the Hitcher, the serial killer in that movie. And the remake is from 2007 and stars Sean Bean as the Hitcher. And it's one of those rare cases, in my opinion, where I actually equally like both versions for one reason or another, really? or for I've different reasons. I've never seen reasons. any of them, but. Um, yeah, they're pretty great. It's it's a pretty basic story. It's about a guy named uh, Jim. I think it's... Yeah, it's Jim in both stories, right. Uh, who, um, like, is delivering a, gar, a car for a friend or something, drives it from Chicago to San Diego, and picks up a hitchhiker on the way. And that hitchhiker turns out to be a fucking serial killer, who is like, uh, yeah, I'm gonna fucking murder you. And, uh, yeah, then... Uh, his name is John Ryder, by the way. Great name. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then uh, Jim, I think the, the setup for this is Jim asks him uh, what he wants. And then, yeah, uh, Ryder says, um, I want you to stop me. And that's the story. And actually, at first, Jim manages to do that. He manages to get him out of his car. Um, but, of course, uh, that's when the game really starts. And John Ryder is following from that point on and murdering everyone on his way. And uh, now Jim and his girlfriend are in real danger. And, you know, John, uh, John Ryder's always on their heels. And, yeah, so pretty, the, the basic uh, story is the same in both movies, both um, uh, the original and the one uh, the remake with Sean Bean. And uh, there, there are a few twists here and there that change things up. And, you know, visuals are, you know, updated a bit in here and there. But, yeah, they're both super cool, straightforward uh, serial killer action horror thriller movies. And uh, I like them both. I think both uh, main actors, like Rutger Hauer and um, Sean Bean, do a terrific job of portraying that character in a slightly different way. They're, they're kind of similar, but, you know, each of them brings their own thing to the table. And I, yeah, I really enjoyed both those movies. I think they're great. Uh, the original anyway, that's a classic in my opinion. But uh, also the remake is pretty pretty damn good for a kind of unnecessary movie. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you didn't have to really make that movie because, you know, it's basically the same thing. But, you know, like I said, some twists, uh, something they, uh, uh, some twists they managed to put in there. And uh, I just enjoy the acting of both those main characters. And they're eerie and they're scary and they are, uh, you know, terrifying, uh, a terrifying serial killer. And it's, you know, this playing to some of those that's i guess that doesn't happen today that much anymore because who picks up a fucking stranger with a car uh with just call car? uber dudes and it's like yeah and who's all that, actually all that, you know who's the... actually tramping anymore like uh, nobody does uh, that right that will be the so, remake the remake from the hitcher is where just the uh, serial killer hires an uber the second remake <laughs> Like the yeah. remake is like it's just called the Uber. The Uber. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe. Head. I mean, oh, sure, yeah. you could do that. You can just take that story and turn it into a modern where it's just the Uber driver is a fucking nut job, or you know, the the Uber driver is the guy who picks up the other dude, uh, and and that turns out to be a secret. You could do that. You can do remake that story endlessly. Sure, but just in that that version, maybe it doesn't really work anymore because you know who picks up a stranger at the street and who would actually. You know, risk getting picked up by a stranger in a car. Uh, Who picks up know. a stranger 
on the street that looks is like a two meter uh, Dutch dude. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like exactly. Like, like you wouldn't pick up like a guy would look like Rutger Hauer. No, sorry. And why would you pick up Sean Bean? He might just die in your car. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> It will turn out bad for you either way. But yeah, it's a, it's a fun set of movies. You can go with each other and have a good time, in my opinion. Uh, the original may be still a bit stronger. I think Rutger Hauer's performance may be a bit more out there than Sean Beans'. Sean Beans is a bit more straightforward. Um, but both equally fun. I enjoy both those versions, and I think uh, you will have a good time if you check them out. Uh, either one. It doesn't really matter. I think the either. concept is just so good. It's like such a good, straightforward horror concept. Yeah. Like I, you say, the, the remake is unnecessary. I, I kind of agree with that. But like, I think such a good, straightforward concept, I don't mind seeing it done twice. And I actually don't mind seeing somebody do it again, like with another weird like casting. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's interesting to see like, okay, what are the small differences they put in there because they did, uh, you know, what, what are the acting choices that are made differently, and maybe you end up liking the remake more than the original. I can see that too because, like I said, you know, they're similar enough, but there are also enough differences to make them stand, uh, you know, apart from each other and be like, yeah, okay, they're their own thing. So uh, maybe someone liked uh, likes the decisions uh, made in the remake more than in the original. I don't know. Choo choo, you're chomping at a bits. So yeah, yeah. Spoiler alert. So um, I, I'm a huge fan of the Hitcher. I fucking love the original Hitcher movie. It's one of my favorite movies, actually. One of my favorite horror films. Um, but like, uh, I, actually, when Rukohoya died um recently, I don't know. I always pronounce his name Rukohoya. I'm sure that's wrong. Yeah, that's wrong. Ruk- yeah. <laughs> he should. The yeah, Dutch guy Ratchet, says Ratchet, it's no. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you, so, you never say it. Right. They always say the English version. So it's the uh, in the English version is Rutger Hauer. And in the Dutch version, it's Rutger Hauer. Rutger Hauer. Okay. Okay. Um, but anyway, when he died, uh, I, you know, I wanted to sort of say goodbye to him in my own way. So I was thinking, what should I watch? Like Blade Runner or The Hitcher? So I actually chose The Hitcher. And you I went back. Just... Hope over the shotgun. Oh. Well, that, that <laughs> That's a cool movie is, too. That basically is Hitcher, isn't it? Like, <laughs> uh, that's no. what he is. <laughs> He's more a good guy in that movie, actually. Yeah. So. <laughs> but like yeah i decided to to rewatch the hitcher um and it was a really yeah it's a, you can never go wrong with that film it's a classic but like i i realized something about that film about rukahoya's rukahawa Ruka motivation <laughs> that i didn't get before like like he the, his whole purpose throughout that film was he wanted that boy to kill him that was his purpose. He wanted that kid to kill him. No one else. He wanted that boy to kill him. And also, the reason he was picking up people um, and killing them was because he was looking for someone to fight back, to someone to prove their worth, someone who was worthwhile to kill him. Because he was suicidal, the Hitcher, in that film, if you pay close attention. Yeah, you know? definitely. Like, I never got that before. And this time when I watched it, because it's been a long time since I watched it, I probably got the fact that... He, he wanted to die, but he the only person who he was going to let kill him was this kid. All right, if you look at the last scene in the film, again, spoiler alert, people, when he's standing up, he, he's got a shotgun, and he's basically shooting at the car, and the guy's trying to shoot, uh, you know, like start his engine or whatever. The kid's trying to start his engine. Any time, that hitcher could have killed that kid. Any time. But he doesn't, because he wants him to kill him. And he's like, come on, come on. Like... I got that for the first time. Like he's letting the kid kill him. Like you know, it's very interesting. Um, yeah, because it feels like he has earned that at that point, right? Like Jim has earned it, and you know because he's he's evaded his grasp often enough, and you know has you know suffered through enough things, so uh, and made it out of it. So that's at this point, all right. You know he fought back enough to make it worth it, and I can find I can finally will live with my weird fucking logic uh yeah. that that guy is gonna kill me and uh yeah you know it's it's cool it's a cool concept it's freaky as fuck but you know it's it's an interest just an interesting character and uh yeah i i i really liked it and i mean it's not that's not the only thing why he's doing that he's obviously having you know, also fun killing those people it's not just that he is mm-hmm. That he's just try wanting, you know. He's it's it's a game for him. I wouldn't say that he revels in it or anything, but he he also 
I also get the feeling that he likes the thrill of the whole thing, right? Maybe it's more the thrill of trying, okay, is this the person that is actually worthy? You know, like you said, is, uh, is this finally the per uh, person? That's why he's looking forward to that stuff. And that's why enjoying is because he, you know, of the chance of finding, finally finding the one person that is able to do this and that is worthy. But it's still, you know, just the, the idea gets him excited. That's, that's what he gets off on, I think. Yeah, it's just definitely. a mix of, you know... Being suicidal, but also getting off on the fact that he might finally find that person. It's it's an interesting uh, uh, dynamic. Yeah, man. The the mystery. The thing is, like we're talking about it here, but I think the mystery of that character goes runs deeper. Like like what happened to him? What turned him suicidal? Do you know what I mean? It's obviously. I think that character is dealing with some really really deep deep seated pain somewhere. But um, that never gets they, elaborated on, right? Yeah, he's that's just, what I mean. He's it's just like a, a force of nature. It's like you don't know where he came from. You don't know why he does. Uh, you not well. You know why he's doing what he's doing, but you don't know why he came to that point that he decided that's what uh, he has to do. That's so. the thing. Like w when I watched it this time, you you know, usually it's just like this fun sort of roller coaster, like you say, force of nature, yeah. it's kid against him. But I really started to think about it on a deeper level, like the last time I watched it, and it, it made it much a much more interesting film than it was previously. When I really started to think, like, why is this guy doing this? You know, what happened to him? Yeah, you know, no, there's some substance to it. Yeah, there's there's, there's a really good uh, mystery there, and you know, so it gets you gets your old cogs whirring if you think about it in the in those kind of ways like i always thought like the end of the film you know like it was like an intense scene where the guy you know they were having this battle but no the guys the the, the hitcher is letting the kid kill him he's letting him do it um yeah, yeah. so it's really it becomes way more interesting when you realize that actually but it was already a really great, great film anyway yes i haven't seen both of them are in my opinion <laughs> you maybe should to, check I, it out i'm I have to watch the yeah. one with Sean Bean because yeah, I do like Sean Bean actually. Who's another <laughs> actor you would want in like that role, like one of those uh, pseudo? Ooh, hmm, who could be another good hitcher from from the current selection? Uh, sure, Robert um... Pattinson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I kind of think so actually. Yeah, yeah maybe. One. I'm trying to 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 think of someone who gives kind of an off vibe, but being charismatic enough. Oh, I, I, yeah, no, 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 not Jared Leto. But it, also it just physically, gives five. that's all. Oh. Uh, I'd I'd have to think about it a while. I don't want to make like a, a shotgun decision. I think Madison is actually a really good choice. Yeah, maybe, probably. I mean, I've I haven't seen him. In of course, Jake Gyllenhaal. Anything, really. but... Jake Gyllenhaal would be great. Actually, he has to get in shape though. Again, like he can't be the nightcrawler person. He has because John Ryder is like he is a physically imposing person in that movie. Like he is, he is dangerous just on a physical level. Woody Allen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would watch it. Uh, not my pick, but you know why not? <laughs> First, I, uh, I I cut off his uh, I cut off his uh, legs, and then I um, uh, I cut off his um, uh, his hands, and uh, and then you know uh, I kind of I cut off his head. Uh, I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this the same to you. Then mm -hmm. I married my daughter, Terrifying. and then, uh, uh oh. <laughs> well, that's his motivation right there. You can't get much more fucked up than marrying your daughter. <laughs> well, yeah. Can't argue with that. Um, Break. Uh, yeah. The last Your movie on my movie. list is the South Korean thriller from 2010 called I Saw the Devil. And I'm hoping you, any of you guys have seen it. Because I'm guessing it's Sorry. a no. Uh, I Saw the Devil is uh, a thriller about you follow this police officer whose wife gets killed by a serial killer. And then he goes on like his own investigation to capture him. And you think, oh, that's going to be the plot of the movie, right? I think, oh, this is going to be like a really intense thriller about this guy going after the serial killer that killed his wife. But what happens is that like, 20, 30 minutes into the movie, he actually captures him. He beats him up, and just about the point where he starts, he's, he's like, he's going to murder him. Uh, he beats him up some more and implants like a tracking chip into him. And it's like a way of torturing uh, the serial killer. is letting him go loose, and every time he's about to kill again or he's about to do anything again, he comes in and beats him up some more and, uh, like, uh, and tortures him a little bit and lets him go. Ha <laughs> ha! Sounds like a fun time, actually. <laughs> but it's like 
this is like it's a really like intense thriller actually because like you can see the the consequence of that really bad choice happening where like other people get hurt in the progress and then like he uh, gets to the point where he is like also as as fucked up as the killer himself like he goes like to really some uh, deep emotions and it ends in a way where you're like oh man this was really fucked up movie to watch like this guy's life is just gone like the things he's done uh, uh you you can't really come back from that and overall it's like just a really intense thriller with a really unique concept played wonderfully by like uh two actors whose name i'm not even gonna, tr- gonna try to pronounce i think uh byung han lee and min sik Choi. one of them is uh who also the, the guy that plays a serial killer is uh from old boy he's the main character from old boy and i oh, think cool. bring Yun lee is one of those south korean actors who's also made it to hollywood you can probably recognize him from some yeah yeah that name sounds very familiar actually think some other stuff but they're really excellent in the roles they're really uh great performances and this the ride goes to some wonderful weird places like there's a moment where he's like the serial killer actually goes like to go for goes looking for help with some other serial killer buddies of his. So there's a, like this entire tense scene where like the, the the cop guy is trying to like go into the house, but that he doesn't know that it's like filled with other other serial killers who also has captured the girl in there. And there's like a really intense like action scene in there where he like he captures this like one uh, uh, serial killer. He's like, oh, I'm gonna torture you the exact way you were like planning on torturing this girl you captured and like cutting off your hands and then eat and like like uh and it's like really intense and really fucked up and it's uh yeah it's hard to watch at times but it's a great movie i mean having uh, having a serial killer club or something having lots of serial killer buddies i mean that's an easy way to get caught surely (laughs) Yes, it kind of is. And that is why they get caught, because they hang out together. Otherwise, those other serial killers would be, uh, in the way, not getting caught, but because he's tracked, and uh, he, he tracks his way there. <laughs> but, yeah. I want to see, like, a John Wick crossover. <laughs> it's like, the Assassin's yeah. Guild versus the Serial Killer's Guild. <laughs> the Serial Killer's Guild. <laughs> but they keep killing each other. There's, like, only one person left, though. Uh, that sounds like fun. Uh, yeah, that does sound like an interesting movie. Um, I'm not sure where I can see it, but yeah, it does sound like a fun yeah. time. It, uh, it, not sure it's a fun time is the way to describe it. Like it's very <laughs> like dark and twisted, and you really feel like shit afterwards. And it's also pretty long, and it's like it really keeps the tense going. Like you really feel tired after you're done watching it. Like oh, I'm uh, I'm happy to get off this ride, even though it was great. You know what? That's a perfect segue into the last film on on the list. Um, the the film I'm going to talk about, which I, which you know, it's a no brainer for this. Talk about Seven. So Seven is uh, yep. a fantastic serial killer film. I I for me personally, I might well say it might be the for me best serial killer movie ever made. Perhaps I, I think so opinion. as well. Like it's just. It's a classic for a reason. Yeah, except uh, what's his? We were talking about the procedurals in uh, in Mindhunter. Yeah. And Mindhunter, yeah. Yeah, um, obviously Brad Pitt's character has not been paying attention to that constantly <laughs> and labeling yeah. him insane and saying he rolls around in his own feces and stuff. <laughs> But yeah, but yeah, it's it's an absolutely uh, fantastic film. Uh, there are many great like the. The thing is, you don't actually get to see any murders. You don't get to see one single fucking murder in that film. You only get to see the aftermaths of them, the bodies or what the the serial killer's done. Like, the most horrific scene, interestingly, in that film is an actor's performance of explaining what happened, which is, spoiler alert for Seven, which is Leland Orso, where he's, he's wearing the giant serrated dildo, and he's sort of explaining how the killer strapped it on and made him, like, fuck a prostitute and you know with splitter or oh, this nasty net i don't even want to talk about it but <laughs> yeah like uh the lust murder basically and lila norse's performance of explaining what happened is just so horrific it's just so intense and nasty and his performance in that is brilliant as well in that scene um so yeah it's it, it, it's oh, it, 
David Fincher just directs the shit out of that. Is so many like it's really bleak, but also really beautiful. It's got a killer soundtrack as well. <laughs> pun intended. Um, uh, what else can I say about that film? I also love the relationship between the two main characters in Seven. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, I, what else can you say about this film? You can say Kevin Spacey, who is like really good in this. Like, and I actually keep his uh, uh the killer hidden from the viewer for a su- really long time and that's a really yeah. way, interesting way that they play with yes indeed it also he was uh, at at that time he was right on his peak as well kevin spacey see he was the most famous person in the film because brad pitt had yet to achieve superstardom and morgan freeman was pretty famous more famous than brad pitt i think at that point but Kevin Spacey was like, like, like the the kind of like breakout star, wasn't he? At that point, it was like really, really hot. And they um, don't show him on the posters or any of like the the stuff, you know, or, or like they don't show his name on the posters even. Like if you watch it for the first time, you wouldn't even know he was in it until he actually appeared on screen. Yeah, which is which is one of the which is one of the which is so so awesome everybody remembers the moment where he sort of becomes a bit detective yeah. <laughs> it's really that was one cool. of the of the craziest twists that he just delivers himself to you know mm-hmm. to them you know for his own reasons <laughs> but yeah it was still an epic moment like um just the whole atmosphere of that movie is so f- fucked up and I've actually not seen it in ages, and I just checked it. It's on Netflix. Maybe I'm just gonna watch it after the recording. <laughs> it's been a while, so why not? Uh, yeah, but goddamn that movie! It's I don't know. It's, hmm, is it my favorite Fincher thing? Probably. I'm not sure. How about you guys? Favorite, but like, <laughs> Fincher's an excellent director. Like this. Yeah. Such no a doubt. Visual style as well. Like he's uh, you. You, uh, sometimes it's used as a negative, but you can, you can see with Fincher that he comes back, comes from directing music videos, and he brings some of that like really intense energy and like visual information to his movies, and he does it really well in uh, Seven. Yeah, definitely. I I, I was always saying uh, slightly before. I also really love the uh, the relationship between the two main characters, which is really interesting because in most sort of cop movies, right. And they sort of start the the movie and they don't like each other. And then as they progress, they kind of gain mutual respect for each other. And by the end, they're like their best friends, right? Inseparable, whatever. I love the way that Seven plays against type there. And they don't, they never quite see eye to eye, those two characters. And there's a, there's a scene brilliantly in the bar where, you know, Morgan Freeman is trying to sort of cajole Brad Pitt into his opinion that the world is a really dark and disgusting place. And Brad Pitt's just like, ends up saying to him, I don't agree with you. No, I just, you know, you want me to agree with you, but I'm not going to say that because that's not what I think. And then basically just ends that scene, which is basically just walking off, sort of, sort of semi out of disgust for Morgan Freeman's worldview. Um, I love the fact that they, they don't resolve their issues before the end of the end of the film. It's like really refreshing. They have to work together and they sort of respect each other on a professional level, but there's no actual, real, genuine like 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 on a personal level. Do you know what I mean? As friends, they're a bit their 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 worldview is like really kind of off kilter, and like you know what I mean. If they weren't working together, they wouldn't be friends. No, they wouldn't. Um, and they're still not friends. They they're never going to be like they're never going to be the buddies who talk about their lives. Uh, on the uh, well, they're like on the stakeout or some shit, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I mean, I, lo- I love that about that as well. I mean, Brad Pitt's point of view has probably changed at the end of this movie, like, yeah, no, he's not gonna be a so right? they might be more agreeable now, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> kind of depressing. But I, I the yeah. thing is, like, at the end of the at the end of the movie, um, again, major spoiler alert for seven, but everybody's in the world has fucking seen it, so never mind, let's hope so. But like, uh, you know, because I was talking about this uh, with the, the the couple of people I was watching it with. But like, and, I, and it was like a hundred percent of the people would have done exactly what Brad Pitt did at the end of the film. Yeah, like, sure, yeah. of course, it's totally understandable. Yeah, no, no, I mean, that's, you're definitely that's like, no, he should have taken him back in. No, it's definitely like a moment where you're like, yeah, you can totally understand him making the decision. Yeah. yeah. If you, if if the internet has taught us something, that wrath is probably one of everyone's favorite uh, uh, deadly sin. 
Yes. So. And, a, and, a, and a really, really rare movie where the bad guy just outright just fucking wins. Like, just yep. gets a winning. Like, it's really rare to see someone... Without any compromise. Guy. Yeah, exactly. He has his goal. He achieves every step of the way that he has pl had planned from beginning to end. Nothing. Everything goes his way. It's crazy. Like, he's just... Yeah. He's got them all figured out. He had them all figured out. Everything He got everything what he wanted. Yeah, it's it's like... It's re like I can I can probably count the movies that where that happens like on like one hand. I think the only one that ever really springs to mind is like Arlington Road. That's the only other one I can think of. Like where the oh, bad that's guy also just, such a depressing movie. Holy yeah. shit! The bad guy Damn. just gets a straight up win in that film. <laughs> yeah. That was I loved it. It was like <laughs> that blew the mind of my stepdad because he saw that movie, he didn't know anything about it, and he's like, wait. They're getting away. Nobody knows that uh, that they are and they're winning. And I'm like, yeah, that's the point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the point. The movie's super depressing. <laughs> and he's like, but but that can't be happening. And I'm like, why? <laughs> Not every movie has to have a happy ending. But yeah, it's fucking. Awesome. Oh my god, <laughs> he was so he was so distraught after watching that movie. <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah, yeah, it was a real gut punch. That's, a, that's amazing. Like, yeah. amazing back. I win. And 7 2. So, yeah, there you go. Um, mm -hmm. uh, hooray for If you want to have a really bad time, yeah. <laughs> watch 7 and Arlington Road. <laughs> yeah, double, double bill. <laughs> Fincher is really into, like, movies about serial killers and stuff like that. I think, like, uh, like half his movies are about those, about, uh, about uh, psychopaths, at least. Sometimes yeah. just home invasions. Yeah, but you got this, you got the girl with the dragon the two, you got Zodiac, even like God Girl almost fits it, you know? So yeah. Oh, God Girl is fucked up as well. Mindhunter, yeah. yeah, definitely. So he definitely has like, an interest, he's definitely interested in that. He has a that. type, yeah. He has yeah. a type. People that kill a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's this type of story. Oh. People that kill a lot of people and Mark Zuckerberg. So I'm not sure what that says about nah. Mark Zuckerberg, but uh, mm. yeah. So, um, are we going to uh, choose some movies for each other to watch uh, on this particular oh, episode? Because there was talk about it. Or are we not going to do that this week? Are we going to do that this week? I didn't think of any. I didn't think of any, so uh, mm, I'd have to get back to you guys. All right, then do we don't yeah, do that's so we yeah, that's a no this, then. You get, cut this stuff out. Yeah, yeah all right. But that's Choo Choo's decision. But, you know, you could pick two and I'll s tell ah, you my choice ah, after we, we do it on Skype. Okay. So we have to think about it. But you cut I it just, out. I cut so. this little. All right. Well, uh, that was a lot of fun, but that's our, <laughs> our uh, opinions on <laughs> Zero Killers. Yeah, fun, fun for the family. <laughs> fun, fun for everybody. It, uh, Having a gay know, old time. Yeah, gay old time. Yeah, gay. Well, that's, that's a Tom Ripley's uh, thing, isn't it? But uh, <laughs> yeah, also Flintstones. It's all fun and games until somebody dies. Well, that's our opinion on uh, Serial Killer Media. However, if you have an opinion, uh, yeah, please sound off in the comment section. And uh, please join us next time your murder lust explodes and you feel like doing your stepdad a mischief by abusing his balls with a b-ball bat. <laughs>